Anwen sucked in air between her teeth and counted to ten, trying to make her pounding heart slow down. The second explosion happened what felt like only a matter of seconds behind the other. The third was their signal to move. She just hoped the others were doing okay. From the sounds behind the facade, she was sure things had gotten a lot more hectic out there. It reminded her of what happened when someone kicked over an ant hill. Chaos everywhere. Her mother continued to hold her hand as she silently counted out from the last explosion. When the third rumble filled the air, she let go of her daughter's hand to rush forward. Margot covered her face and hair with a scarf to try and hide the obvious hints of red. She only had to glance sideways once to confirm Anwen had done the same. Just try to fit in with the chaos, she reminded, hoping no one else could hear. The press of the crowd seemed focused on heading towards the initial outburst. Going against the flow would only make them stand out all the more. With a nod, Margot led her daughter with a rather odd zigzag line. It made it seem as though they were following the press of the mages, but in fact they were going against it. Ducking to avoid the notice of one of the higher-up mages, Anwen kept close to the wall her mother had led them to. She recognized where they were, not from past experience, but from her dream vision. Things had changed so much that if she relied on memory alone, she felt sure she'd be lost in a moment. Nothing looked the same, at least someone seemed to know where they were going. A sea of tents rose up before them with people riding around them like spooked horses. Many rushed towards the main entrance of the city. Others seemed to be gathering defenses. It was like an insect hive on high alert. How on earth were they to get through this, she wondered. Madame Millard was about to sit down to a cup of tea when the ground shook under her. The tea slopped up the inside of her cup from the unexpected shaking, staining her shirt. Not sure if it was one of the mages trying to get into the mountain again or something else. She rose to her feet. What's going on out there? At the sound of her voice, the two guards posted outside her tent all but tore the flap open in their haste. Someone has attacked the front of the camp! One cried out. They're calling for everyone to head in that direction to help. The master mage thrust past them into the open, wondering what they were talking about. From her vantage, she could see the smoke billowing from near the city's entrance. Find out what's going on down there! She ordered. Before another guard could rush to obey, a second blast shook the stones around them. More smoke billowed up, but from further in. The woman looked about ready to burst a vessel as her face turned a motley color. Get down there! Now! Kira emerged from the neighboring tent, her expression neutral as she glanced at her aunt. Looks like they're a little early. She observed. You know what to do. Madame Millard nodded. Leave it to the others to sort out. They had bigger fish to fry. And if she knew anything, she knew exactly where to find them. Still on the sandstone arch, Courtney somehow managed to avoid falling flat on her face. It was a feat made necessary after tripping on a small protrusion. She pulled out her dragon knife and asked it to extend into a spear. Stop! She called out to the once familiar boy. Her breath came in short gasps from her efforts to stop him. Having realized who he was, she tried to ram him, but that had failed epically. She managed to send the two of them rolling in different directions. It was a narrow thing, managing to avoid falling from the high structure, but she somehow managed it. And for that brief moment, she thanked Margot for her intense training. It had paid off. But then Joseph turned towards her. She realized something was wrong. His eyes were too glazed over to be normal. Something solid dropped in her stomach as she realized why. It was mage work of the darkest kind. Joseph lunged for the thin knife that had fallen from his grasp no more than a minute before. All he had to do was pierce his hand with it, and his Daphne would come. That's all it would take. It was the only thought in his head. He reached for the blade, only to have it knocked aside by Courtney's long spear. He turned on her like a feral cat. Rich. The knife clattered down the rock wall, landing next to Tyler. He reached to pick it up, but quickly stopped as the metal superheated, causing his skin to burn. He hissed in pain. Instead of taking the blade, he kicked it away. It went skittering along the stones and out of sight. Caught off guard by Joseph's behavior, Courtney found herself thrown back onto the rock. As she landed, the third explosion ripped through the air. Rock crumbled underneath her as Joseph launched himself at her like some wild beast. Joseph! She called out. Stop this! Her blade shrank back to knife form as she tried to ward off the boy's attacks. Joseph snarled as he clawed at her face, trying to reach her throat. No one gets between me and my Daphne! He hissed. No one! He grabbed her wrists with one hand so he could reach past them without further trouble. He tried to pin them above her head as he panted in her face with acrid breath. Courtney managed to free her arms and pushed back. 
She thrusts at his chin to try and gain some leverage against his massive weight. Stop it! This isn't like you! She wondered what had happened to the mild-mannered boy. If Daphne hadn't claimed him, she might have been tempted to try and twist him around her own little finger. But no, that was before she'd met Alan and learned that Tyler was a dragon. Growling, Joseph retaliated by raking suddenly longer than normal nails across her face. Blood splattered from his claws as Courtney's face bled. The feral look in his eye increased as fur began to form along his skin. His bones began to elongate, becoming heavier as they changed. With heart thudding like crazy, Courtney couldn't help but watch with wide eyes. Was this how a fallen was formed? Was the mage circle so depraved they transformed a mortal into one of their creatures? A living one, at that? Her face stung where the claws had gouged her. A small part of her mind focused on fixing the damage while she tried to figure out how to get out of this situation. Joseph's teeth elongated in his changing mouth. They dripped saliva that burned as it hit the mage's skin. He continued to claw at her, held back only by the failing strength of her arms. If only he could get his teeth next to her throat, then it would be over and he could go find his missing blade. With a scream of pain and rage, Courtney focused her energy into the knife she held in one hand. Turning it to just the right angle, she willed the blade to extend. With a rush of air, the blade changed shape, pushing the creature from her and toppled him over the side. There was a thud as the half-fallen hit the ground below. Breathing heavily, Courtney took a moment to focus on closing her wounds. She silently thanked Margot for teaching her the basic art of healing. Shaking, she took to her feet and prepared to send out her barrage against the growing mass of mages below. Tyler almost felt like he was wading through a dream. In that state, he used his abilities to maim and sometimes kill the mages milling around him. To him, it was though the crazed villagers moved around him like molasses. His nature made it more than easy to flow around his foes like Quicksilver. He didn't want to kill any more than he had to. The majority of the mages were not truly bad, but there sure were a lot of them. Off to one side, Walter lobbed another of his homemade bombs, sending up a series of glass shrapnel and fire. The distraction this caused gave Tyler all the advantage he needed. He swept through another group of mages like a hot knife and butter. They were so distracted by the chaos that he incapacitated them with ease. Knocking one mage to the ground, Tyler ducked to avoid another one of Walter's homemade bombs. It sailed through the air, narrowly missing his head. The glass orbs were small enough that they weren't too noticeable. Their coloring was also less obvious than the ornaments he usually used on his holiday tree. Tyler took a moment to look ahead. Seeing past the others with his dragon sight, he hoped to catch a glimpse of Amon and her mother. With luck, they'd made their way to the gates by now. Whether it was because of some kind of interference or something else, he couldn't see them. But he could feel Amon's heartbeat pounding out with his and knew that, at least for now, she was safe. He prayed it would stay that way. When Madame Millard seemed less inclined to join the others, Maggie Mintaw took over. Let the Master Mage do her thing but Maggie would be the one whose lauds would be sung over the centuries. We're obviously dealing with a decent-sized group. Maggie told her compatriots. They want to divide us by throwing everything in chaos. We must not let them. The other mages of the inner circle nodded in agreement. Their people were running around like mindless zombies, no one leading them. That had to change. You will take charge of the individual districts and bring order to this chaos. The elder mage demanded. And I will personally join you while our more cowardly leader hides in the hills. Cries of agreement and outrage filled the small gathering. They broke into their respective groups as Maggie waved them off. Order would be brought to the fight below. They would find those who dared to defy the circle and make an example of them. And if they found the Key Keeper, or the Keda among the mix, well, their reward would be more than ample. <laughs>